Hello everyone, thank you for being here. Today's video is a special one because when my dad died, we found this old Minolta film camera and lens and as many, many, he had too many, he had too many different things, but I never saw him taking photographs with us, at least that I can remember. And while he wasn't really into photography that much, he was very much into cars. And one of my regrets is that I never really took him out into the country to see some of the abandoned cars that I see when I'm out doing my photo trips. So what I can do now though, is honor him a little bit by taking this 50 year old, 50 millimeter 1.4 lens out, use an adapter, put it on a new camera, and go out and take photos of old cars and trucks. And, and maybe, just maybe, my dad is looking down, trying to tell me some of the stories from his youth that I took for granted a long time ago, but I, I would give anything to go back and hear about now. So let's go on a photo trip where I'll tell you a little bit about adapting vintage lenses to your camera and why they could be so awesome even in 2023. I called my buddy Jeremy, who was one of the only people I am friends with now who knew my dad, and we headed out from Omaha to Kearney, Nebraska to hunt for a field of old abandoned vehicles to make some vintage magic with modern cameras. A quick little tip is if you have a destination in mind, try to stop somewhere first, just to kind of shake the rust off and uh, you know take a couple bad shots like I'm about to do here. Like I said, just not a great shot. It's fine, but it's a little cold. Everything through that old Minota lens is just a little bit on the cool side, so you gotta go in and warm it up real quick. Either way, it's just not that great of a shot. This Minolta 50 millimeter 1.4 was made 50 years ago in 1973. It's crazy. Uh, it's a really easy lens to work with. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, but it just works fantastic, right? The aperture ring is, is, is nice, it clicks well, it's got a distance scale, um, and it just feels nice to focus. It's really smooth, and match that with the high resolution of the EVF and the X-H2, I almost never missed any shots, even when I was wide open at 1.4. The lens feels really good in the hands, it's balanced, it's got a metal and glass construction, that's about all there is in it. This shot's a lot better than the other one. I think it's pretty cool. You got that nice silhouette against the sky and you got a little texture. And then uh, this shot just doesn't work for me. I don't I don't really dig how the color looks, but I took it and I thought I'd show you a, another bad shot. Before we get to our destination though, I want to talk to you just real quickly about uh, using an adapter on your camera. Most lens adapters work the same, but like anything else, you could spend a lot of money or just a little bit, or like me, you could spend $12. $12 to put it on a almost $2,000 digital camera, right? All you have to do is put the adapter on the body, then attach the vintage lens to your camera. After you've done that, all you have to do is go into the menu to tell your Fujifilm camera what focal length you're using so the image stabilization can do its job. And luckily this Minolta also has an aperture ring, which means that I have full functionality of shutter, aperture, and ISO. Uh, it's just manual focus, of course, because it's an old manual focus lens. As a side note, I didn't use any focus assist during the trip. Uh, I, I love the high resolution EVF in the Fuji X-H2 bodies and almost every photo I took was focused where I wanted to be because the uh, act of focusing with this lens on this camera is just really, really nice and smooth. What do you think of Jeremy? I'm thinking this is beautiful, what a spot. I mean, from the from the building coming down on the left, a damn old international bulldozer. All these old cars. Look at the car on its side up here. That looks yeah, that looks like art. Like somebody, dear, come over like this way. I mean, look at this international. Sometimes with vintage lenses, we get a little bit low contrast, a little bit less detail, and that's just the nature of having a 50-year-old lens. You know, compare it to a shot that I took with my iPhone a couple months before, and the iPhone is a lot sharper and a lot, you know, more bright and colorful too.
I really love the interiors of these cars. They have so much character in the way the designers created the steering wheels and the speed gauges and the gas gauges and all that stuff. It's just really cool. We could have spent six, seven hours at this location and, and not even come close to trying to get all the stuff that we saw. It's such a contrast between the clinical sharpness of our modern lenses and something like this. I think it's just a little bit special. It's a little bit different. And it's a way to stretch yourself and let go of some of those things where you want perfection all the time. It's one of the benefits of going out and using these retro lenses. The 51.4 on the Fuji camera is a 75 and it you know does a really good job. It has really cool background blur and it also has really good close focus detail. When you're focusing on something close to you, it looks great. Sometimes when you're focusing on things a little bit farther away, it gets a little bit blurrier. So it's one of those things to kind of go out there and mess around with your vintage lens to figure out what its characteristics are. This shot's actually a stitch, so I couldn't get it with one single 75 millimeter equivalent full frame shot. I had to back up and take six shots and then use Lightroom to stitch them together. One of the unfortunate parts about going out in the country are, are bugs and especially ticks. So this deep woods off seemed to do a good job of making sure that we weren't hit with all, with all those blood sucking little insects. There are times when I wish I was a film photographer and every shot actually cost like a decent amount of money because I take too many photos. These three shots, for instance, I just didn't know what to do. Like I was like, I think I'd see some compositions, but at the end of the day, which one is the best one? Like which one is the one that stays in the portfolio? If you, if you have an idea of these three shots, let me know below in the comments. when the sun kind of burst out of the clouds and really made a difference in how the Minolta renders. I think that from this point on, the shots are quite a bit better and I'll know that I need to use the Minolta most likely in just, you know, brighter situations to, to take advantage of how old this thing is. Photography is always about the light and this is a good example of how beautiful light can make your photo. Compare that with my first shot of the day where everything was kind of flat and it's just a dramatic difference. This photo is a really good example of 
how cool those retro lenses could be. It renders everything just a little bit cooler. You know, modern lenses are so controlled for so many of the problems that, that might exist, like chromatic aberration and stuff like that. But in this photo, I think it helps it. This was my favorite truck of the entire trip. Probably my favorite car. The patina is amazing. The colors are incredible. And I, I took more shots than I'm even showing here, but I, I had to make this video somewhat uh, presentable. So uh, my favorite stitch of the day was this one for sure. It's just super wide, super cool. Took a lot of shots and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. around two and a half hours or three hours away from home we decided to, to head on out but the clouds were so cool they were ominous and the light was becoming stunning so of course we have to stop especially at a place like this The light continued to be amazing. So even then when we stopped and got subway and some gas, man, I just couldn't stop taking photos. Luckily as well, there was this abandoned building right next to the gas station. That was a lot of fun to shoot too. I'm running all over, I'm trying to get this storm cloud. It's pretty awesome. It took us quite a bit longer than normal to get home and you can see that the winds were knocking over semis which was wild so we had to drive slow and careful it was pretty crazy out what's pretty special for me is that at the end of the day i didn't get a chance to take my dad out to see anything like this but it's kind of special that i use a lens that he looked through and i went out and uh, <laughs> I'm getting choked up. Um, and I went out and, and, and was able to see through that lens a little bit too. And my dad was an artist and, and he was a good dude. And uh, dad, damn, wish I could have showed you some of these things. <laughs>